Hi everyone, my name is Nick and today I'm going to wrap up 2021 by going over what I would consider to be at the moment my favorite houseplants. So I have gone around my apartment over the last couple of weeks and have been painstakingly deciding what are my top 10 houseplants? What are the ones that bring me the most joy? And if I was hypothetically moving across the country and I could only bring 10 houseplants with me, uh, what are the ones that would come with me? No questions asked. So I think I've narrowed it down. It was a little difficult, surprisingly, but um, I don't even know which one to talk about first because I just love all of these so much. And I'm so excited to talk about these today. I'm looking all around at the plants I have around me and they're all just so 100% my vibe. And that's just obviously my favorite thing to talk about. So, oh goodness. So let's talk about this one first. So this one has definitely been, been featured in my past like top 10 houseplants or my favorite houseplants videos. So this is a Cissus adenopoda. And this is really just like the epitome of what I'm looking for in a houseplant. This looks like a weed. It looks like something you just yanked out of the sidewalk here in Philadelphia. It's got that vibe, or it could be something that's growing up like a trellis or creeping around some tree trunk or branches in the woods. You know what I mean? You can totally see what vibe this is. This is just absolutely what I'm looking for. And this has been really one of my favorite houseplants for a couple of years now. I just absolutely am obsessed with the overall look of this plant with the three part leaves and they get a little bit of this purple shade on the back as you can see, which I am just head over heels for. If you follow me here on YouTube, you know I absolutely love houseplants that have another color on the back side of the leaves than they do on the front. And the leaves are incredibly fuzzy. I've been really having a soft spot this year for fuzzy houseplants, or I guess I've had for a while, but I've just really been feeling it this year. See, it's not the easiest houseplant to care for. It does have a little bit of a pattern with its growth where it will grow very aggressively and then maybe like deep in the winter, the plant dies back a little bit and then it'll come back in the springtime. So it does have like a little bit of a habit that it follows. This one is admittedly a newer one for me as my one I'd had prior to this one has just gotten so tired over the years. So I ended up bring in a new one in my home as I slowly got that one out of my home. But this one has been growing tremendously for me. I grow it on my bookcase over in my desk area in my living room and it seems to really be enjoying it. And I really appreciate about this houseplant and some other more leafy cysts that if you are not watering them enough, uh, they will wilt pretty readily and be very uh, vocal with you and visual when it's time to water your houseplants. However, as these are more, I don't want to call them finicky, but they're just not the easiest houseplants on planet Earth. They're definitely for the intermediate gardener, uh, but they do require more moist soil. If you do not water your cysts enough, uh, in most cases, there is going to be one time where they just don't really come back from that wilt. So you best to be on top of them. Uh, but I just have this one still sitting in this plastic nursery pot. I got this one from Steve's Leaves as I get most of my more funky houseplants that I have. And I just really love the appearance. You could absolutely grow this one up a uh, trellis. The old one that I had, I had it sitting inside a hanging planter that had like three leather straps and these uh, vines uh, would kind of grab onto them and like twist around them as they it would grow up and then they would get to the top of the thing and it would just like spill down like a waterfall. It was really a sight to see. But this one I'm just trying to grow a little bit differently. And uh, it has been grabbing onto things in its vicinity on the bookcase, but I've been trying to keep it from doing that at the same time because I'm nervous I'm gonna like pull it off to water it one day and a couple things are gonna come tumbling down with it. So I've been a little proactive there, but um, in a perfect world, I would let this plant meander uh, every which way and do whatever it wants. But a really cool houseplant, definitely been one of my favorites for a couple years now, and that's for good reason. It really is such an incredible houseplant and incredibly underrated. Cissus as a whole are just uh, not really the most popular houseplants out there, and I understand. They're really not the most showy houseplants, but uh, if you are somebody who appreciates the more weedy, woodlandy houseplants, I think that's one, that one's gonna fit you like a glove. So another one that I know I have probably talked about in um, past, uh, favorite plant videos because I'm still obsessed with it to this very day is my uh, Peperomia quadrangularis. Now I will promise you guys I will talk about some different plants later in this video. I'm just trying to get the ones out of the way that I know I've talked about in the past. But some of these, I just love them so much and I'm gonna love them for a really long time. So I can't help it, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get, keep it a little diverse though. So this is my Peperomia quadrangularis. This is really just one of my favorite Peperomias in general. Like this is one of the ones that got me really excited about Peperomia when I first got my hands on it. And uh, as you can see why, it really just proves to be an excellent houseplant. I purchased this as, or I think I actually got it in an unboxing, it doesn't matter, but I got this as just a four inch pot. It wasn't spilling over the edges by any means as far as I remember. I'm pretty sure it was just a super full 
four inch pot uh, inside the pot and I had planted it inside this uh, ceramic planter, this beautiful little copper ceramic planter, hung it up in this macrame hanger thingy that I made and the rest has been history. This has been living in here uh, since I have got this houseplant. Uh, it has exploded ever since then. It's, it's been a couple of years and you know the adage that I always say on here is uh, the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, the third year they leap. So this one is on its third year and it is leaping honey, I can tell you that much. But I really just appreciate the way that it's just completely enveloping this planter. Uh, it really is just such a vibe. It is a little fragile. Uh, if I mess with this too much, if I move around these vines, it's going to drop a couple leaves. So I usually try to leave it be, but fortunately this plant has gotten so full enough to the point where I don't really have to worry about it dropping a couple leaves. Um, and as, as it is a peperomia, uh, it appreciates medium to higher light scenarios. This is a more succulent, like thicker peperomia. So I grew, I grew this one in a west-facing window in my old apartment for a lengthy amount of time until I moved here. And now I have it growing in an east-facing window and it seems to be enjoying that just as much. Uh, but I would be mindful not to overwater this. I've never watered my peperomia quadrangularis more than once a week. Uh, so that's kind of my rough routine that I have going on. Probably like every seven to 10 days, I go ahead and give this thing a drink. I also have a couple more drought tolerant plants hanging up next to it. So they all kind of follow the same regimen there. So that's pretty easy to follow, but really just an incredible house plant. It's really proven to be uh, a fantastic peperomia for me. And it definitely is one of the more popular peperomia, I would say. Uh, peperomia are across the board, incredibly inexpensive. You're normally not gonna pay more than like $15 for a full pot of four inch peperomia, but this one I wouldn't be surprised if that price kind of creeps up to like maybe $25, $30 for a full four inch pot. So just something to bear in mind there, but uh, I can promise you this plant is very reliable and a really fun plant to grow and just is extremely rewarding. One that I think is going to be in my favorite plant videos for a couple years to come. So buckle up there. I hope it doesn't bore you too much. And of course this plant is, as I said, super fragile. So I gotta be super careful putting it down. But let's talk about a newer one. Let's talk about one that I feel like I haven't talked about before here in my favorite plants video. So this one has kind of taken uh, me by storm this year. So this is a Sideraceus fuscata. I'm not exactly positive on how to pronounce this houseplant. Uh, I got this one in one of my Steve's Leaves unboxings that I did earlier this year, and this one just really blew me away. This is a spiderwort, so it's very closely related to like the Tradescanthia zebrina or the inch plant. There's many different names for that plant and all the other ones that are closely related, like the Calesia, which I don't remember the names for those, but you know what I'm talking about. All those like fun little traily houseplants that are very easy to propagate. This is in that same uh, family of houseplants, but it, it looks completely different and it just gives me such a different vibe. But at the same time, if you look really closely at this plant, you can see how these leaves do kind of resemble like those of an inch plant. So I really love that for that reason. But not only that, there's just so many like nuanced things about this house plant that I'm obsessed with. The, the leaves are incredibly fuzzy and the fuzz itself is like this very like, reddish pinkish purple shade that I don't know if it's gonna come off on camera that well, but it just envelops every part of the leaf and the stems and the petioles and all of every single part of the plant is just completely encased by this red fuzz and it's just so soft so as soon as i got this house plant i decided it was going to live right next uh to my desk area so every time i'm sitting doing my work i can just go and give this plant a little feel and it's definitely very calming but it's also proven to be a very reliable houseplant. It hasn't grown tremendously as I have only had this houseplant for maybe like six months and the leaves are rather big. So that kind of, you know, translates to me as a houseplant that wouldn't grow as fast as its uh, cousins, the inch plant and the Calesia and all those plants that grow like a mile a minute. Uh, this one's been a little bit more slower for me, but I just really appreciate the way it's kind of filling out in a rosette pattern. I'm interested to see how this plant grows uh, down the line, like how it fills out or if it starts to like vine at all. I really have no idea how this plant grows. And this silver streak that the leaves get down the center is just to die for and it really does kind of shimmer in the light. And the back sides of the leaves sport this kind of purple pattern, but it's also like very splotchy. There's just so much to love about this houseplant. You can see why I'm so excited about that. And the icing on the cake is that this houseplant is incredibly inexpensive. I think this is on Steve's leaves for only like $15. So for a really out there houseplant, $15 is a steal. And it's really just, it's, it's so incredible. I could keep talking about this one for a while, but I'm gonna cut it off because it's all gonna be the same things over and over again because I don't really have much to say about the care about this houseplant because we haven't really got too familiar yet, but it's just been living 
um, on my desk underneath my Soltex Solutions Aspect Light, which I would normally leave my discount code, but I think it expires tomorrow when I'm uploading this video. So check the description for my new discount code if you're interested to save 15% on your own Soltex Solutions Aspect Light. And another one that was living under the light for a little bit of time, but I've since moved it, since moving to this apartment, is uh, my Agli Nema Chocolate. Now, this is just a really stunning Agli Nema or Chinese Evergreen. It really gives you total vibes of like Calathea Ornata or Calathea Beauty Star. Those Calatheas are prayer plants that have the pink stripes in the leaves or the pinstripes. So this one just really struck a note for me the first time I ever saw it, but this was also a gift from Urban Jungle, the store that I used to work at when I left. So I also really appreciate this plant for that reason. It has some sentimental value, but the, the, the visual of this plant alone is just killer. I have this one sitting directly next to my TV. So it's one of the plants that I can just kind of meander over and look at with my eyes uh, when whatever's on the TV gets a little boring. And also the backside of the leaves also uh, kind of sport those. Um, it's, a, it's like a purple color. It kind of like, from far away, it does kind of look like brownish, like brownish purple, but when you're up close, it really is pretty harshly purple, like exactly the like maroon color that you would see on the back sides of those calatheas that I'm referring to with the pinstripes. But as this is an Agli Nemo or Chinese Evergreen, this has just been like a super reliable houseplant. Uh, Chinese Evergreens are just like the leafiest, most foliage houseplant that I'm willing to shove into the darkest corners of my home. And this one, as it does have some darker foliage, I found has really just thrive there. So like I said, I used to have it under a grow light if I'm not mistaken, but uh, since moving here, I put it in a darker corner of my home and it's really just been thriving as you can see. It's filling out quite nicely. And of course, as Agli Namas do, they do get some leaves that start to turn yellow from the base over time and they fall off and then it starts to form this little bit of like cane that you can see here. Uh, but it hasn't been yelling at an alarming rate. Uh, this one right here I'm leaving be because it still has a little bit of green on it. So I feel as if uh, it's still like drawing energy or the plant is kind of putting all of its like negative energy into this leaf here. So uh, once it's completely spent and like yellow and maybe turning brown and it just pops right off, then I'll consider taking the leaf off. But it's not really affecting this plant aesthetically for me and it makes me feel better about uh, the plant not making another leaf turn yellow in the meantime. So you get the idea there. But uh, as I was kind of saying with the light, you don't necessarily want to shove your Agli Namas right into a dark corner in your home as soon as you get them, because then you're probably going to have like three or four leaves turn yellow at a time because these were growing in the greenhouse in optimal conditions before we got them. And then they were moved to a houseplant store after being on a truck for who knows how long and then brought to our cold, dry homes. Uh, so you could imagine, you should definitely, in any case, with any of your house plants, make sure to kind of give them uh, prime conditions as you're first moving them into your home and then leave them in their plastic nursery planter for at least a week or two for them uh, to kind of settle in. But um, Agli Namas, once they are kind of used to your home setting, that's when I find that you can kind of push into the darker corners of your home and they seem to do totally fine. Leaves stay the same size. Nothing bad to report, but yeah, this is just such a gorgeous houseplant and it looks excellent in this red plant. It really kind of just brings it all together, you know what I mean? Obviously, there's going to be a Hoya on today's list. You guys know I love Hoya, but which one do you think I'm going to talk about? So the one that's been bringing me the most joy this year, I would say, is surprisingly, you might think, uh, this Hoya Wojedii variegata, or Hoya Kensiana variegata. I really don't know exactly the one that's on the market. You guys can let me know in the comments but I just really love the character that this houseplant has. Do you see how gorgeous it is? This one has been living in my east facing window. I forget where I was living in my old apartment, but since I moved here, I put it in an east facing window. It actually lives directly next to my Peperomia quadrangularis. So those follow a very similar watering regimen. Um, but the leaves have just really like formed this excellent just color and character in that east facing window. You can see how the margins of the leaves get kind of like this black purplish like outline. And then some of the leaves have that kind of like red stressing to them. It is really something. And this plant has filled out incredibly over time. It's not like trailing and like spilling over like the way my Hoya Curtisii is, if you recall that from a couple videos ago when I was, um, featuring that one, but this one really is just filling out so incredibly. I do not remember it being nearly this full when I got it. And something I actually just noticed when I was pulling this down uh, for this video is it has this vine here, this one trailing vine that's actually like worked its way inside the drainage hole. 
So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if the vine's just gonna be leafless and like work its way up the soil like a Sansevieria baby would or like a Pilea peperomioides baby would, but I'm almost like, did I find a new way to propagate houseplants, have them grow back up inside the drainage hole and then out the top and then just cut it here and then it'll grow off again? I'm kind of kidding, but like I feel like that's kind of what's gonna happen here because eventually I'm gonna cut this because this isn't really doing me any good. I kind of I kind of would like this house plant to start, you know, going down here. But trust me, I've tried pulling this thing out. It's not gonna come out without breaking. That thing has rooted for days inside there. In fact, I can see it literally looks like it's branched. So we'll find out what happens there. A little fun experiment we have going on. But this Hoya just really is uh, really speaking to me lately. I just love the vibe that it has. I would love, like I said, for it to trail and just become like fully encompassed around this planter here, which I really do love this hanging planter by Brunning Pottery. It really complements it. And it's probably one of the reasons why I like this house plant even more because admit it, this planter really does complement this house plant, but yeah, it's just so gorgeous. Super easy Hoya to care for. Ridiculously easy one to get your hands on. I feel like most times you're going to find this one for sale on the Hoya selection at your local nursery, or maybe you could even find it at your big box stores. I don't know, but really excellent Hoya. Uh, like I said, I don't know if it's Poietii or Kentiana. I'm a little confused with the similarities and differences there, but I really have been feeling it lately. And that's the only Hoya I'm going to talk about in today's video, but I am going to talk about its cousin, Dyskidia, or Dyshidia, because you guys know I'm a big fan of that. So this is my Dyskidia Numularia variegata. You might recall, if you watched my videos earlier this year, in one of my Steezly's unboxings, they sent me a Dyskidia Numularia, the plain green one, but it didn't go very well, guys, I will admit. I have, like, a tiny little piece of it that I think I've saved, but... I'm not really expecting anything out of it. So this is the one that's going to have to live with me for the time being, but I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I shouldn't be downplaying it because it's really, it's it's in my favorite house plant list today. So clearly I'm obsessed with it. So uh, this is the variegated version, which I do really appreciate the variegated version. And in fact, after getting my hands on the plain green version, I feel like I realized that I like the variegated version a little bit more. I will admit, this one really does stand out amongst the other Dyskidias that I grow in my home, where I feel like the plain green Numelarium is kind of blended in with the other ones. So, you know, I guess I kind of learned a lesson there. But I got this one from my friend Autumn, who runs Plant Haven out of Toronto. And uh, when she gave it to me, she had to actually give it to me bare root because it came from Canada. So um, when she brought it over the border, it was bare root and I planted it up in some soil and it didn't really love me. I have learned many times since then that the Skidia really don't love growing in soil. So I took what was left of the plant after a little bit of failure, but these Dyskidia numularia are not easy houseplants to grow. Please let me know your secrets if you have any. Anyway, I decided to take note of some of the other Dyskidias I was growing in my home. This was probably like two, a year and a half ago-ish at this point, maybe like two years ago coming up on, and I just slapped some of it on this, a little piece of wood here with some uh, sphagnum moss. I just wrapped it around with florist wire because uh, that's how I sold some Dyskidias back at the store when I worked there. So I just took a note there, and this plant has kind of really taken to the setting. It was just a couple of these leaves. You can kind of see, like, the main ones that it was when I laid it down on the moss, and then you can kind of tell, like, all the new growth that's come on since then. So a really fun way to grow houseplants. And it was really easy to do. Like I said, I just laid moss on it, and I just literally wrapped this with florist wire. However, it's been, like, two years, so as you can kind of see all over it, florist wire is starting to kind of rust and um, fall off at bits. However, this moss is like really fixed to this. And I've had that in the past where like the mounting materials that I have on my mounts had kind of like rusted or rotted away or broken away over time. And then the moss itself was still stuck to the wood because it's just been there for so long. So I have a hunch that if I did take all this metal off at this time, the moss would stay completely fine. So maybe I could experiment with that or I could just use new wire and just get rid of the rust. Anyway, just something I want to keep in mind there because this, while I think is a beautiful way to mount houseplants, I just need to find some more practical ways to do it, let's say. So I'm just letting you know in case you want to do it yourself. But you might also just be wondering, how do I water this? I just take it to the sink and, 
or it's actually I'll often just take all my mounts off the wall, throw them in the shower and turn the shower on. But if it's just one, I'll just take it and put it in the sink, lay it down, get the whole thing wet, and then just kind of like lay it on the counter for like half a day for it to dry enough for me to put it back up on the wall because I just don't want a dripping plant up on my wall, as you can imagine. So yeah, a really fun way to grow house plants. A really excellent house plant. The Skitty Numeraria is definitely going to be one of my favorites for a while because I just really have a soft spot for this plant. It might have been featured in my last video that I did, which I don't even know when that was, but forgive me if that is the case. Um, so this is really like my poster child. Oh my God, wait, I am talking about another Hoya. Oh my gosh, let me explain. <laughs> so I had been coming up with this list for like weeks now. I had nine of them. So I literally had all nine of them and then I was this morning before I filmed, like, I need to figure out what my 10th favorite houseplant is. And as I was walking around my apartment fetching all the houseplants for this video, I was literally waiting for one to beckon me. And it was this that was in front of me the whole time. <laughs> it's my Hoya Australis. And I really am obsessed with this thing. Like, this is truly my poster child for my Hoyas. This is my pride and joy in the sense of it's a Hoya that I just bought normally back when I worked at the plant store in just a four or six inch pot and just planted it up and it didn't do nothing for me for a really long time. In fact, it started dying back and really wasn't doing too hot. And then one day, it just started growing and it never stopped. And it wrapped its way around. I had like a little like bottle that I propagated it with hanging in my window and I had to just hang it on a little cup hook. And it was just a long, long, long like string that it was hanging on. And so this Hoya started to wrap its way around one by one until I think there was like nine tendrils that had completely wrapped their way around this thing. And I was kind of worried it was gonna like pull its way out of the ceiling because I just had it up there with a cup hook. It wasn't like a, an anchored hook or anything. So I then decided to uh, very painstakingly pull all of the tendrils off one by one and then I went and put it up on these two bamboo hoops that I just kind of intertwined with each other. So that kind of forms more like a, a 3D effect. And I am really obsessed with this. I wish that I had a better place to put this houseplant because it admittedly lives like shoved behind a couple other houseplants in the back corner of a window because that's where this houseplant does best as you can clearly see, uh, which is why I didn't notice it right away. So just giving my excuse if you don't mind. But uh, yes, I am um, truly head over heels for this Hoyle Australis. This is like the one that I can't believe that I didn't even think about including it today. So obviously I am, but uh, there are a couple other plants that I was considering for this spot. And then this one was the one that was just like, no, there's no questions asked. Hoya Australis, one of my favorite houseplants. And it's just a plain Hoya. That's kind of what I love about it. Like Hoya Carnosa has been having a moment with me. I've always loved Hoya Puba Calyx, definitely one of my favorite Hoyas, although I'm not going to talk about it in today's video, so don't worry. But this one just really stands out to me. I just love the plain green leaves. I've tried growing the variegated version a couple times to no avail, so... Yeah, I'm surprised that this one has been growing so uh, steadily for me, but you can really see how full this plant is. And it's extremely, extremely easygoing. Uh, I probably water this thing like every two weeks just because it's so hidden for me. I don't normally think about watering it, but uh, it's never given me any issues. It rarely has any leaves like turning yellow or browning. It just always seems to be having new growth on it, as you can see with all these like purple tendrils going on up here that I've uh, since, I think they actually tried to grab onto something else in the area, so I pulled them off. I think my string of hearts that like grabbed onto like a couple of the vines that were coming down. So I pulled them off and I'm trying to like tuck them in around here, but yeah, a fun little project, but uh, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this in a couple years because none of my other Hoyas are growing this aggressively, but this one has really come into its own as you can see. And oh goodness, I feel like a couple of these I might've talked about in old videos, but like I was kind of saying my tastes change, but they don't change that much. <laughs> So this is my Peperomia Incana. This is like the felted Peperomia. And as you can kind of see with the pattern of fuzzy houseplants that I'm a big fan of, uh, this is another one. I'm like this, it's got a rogue vine right here. That's been happening with a couple of my Peperomias lately where I just have like this like beautiful like manicured plant in the center. And then just like the, the black sheep of the family right here. So yeah, but it has like a lot of new growth along the stem as you can see like pretty much all the nodes from here on have new growth coming out of them. So I don't know what to do about it. So I'm just gonna let it chill for right now, but I would prefer it to be just this. But anyway, this houseplant is gorgeous for its blue hue that it has. It's got this like glaucous bluish silvery color that just really stands out and kind of translates that it's one that can really withstand some sunlight. So 
I grow this one directly in my east facing windows, which in my home is very bright because I live like kind of high up in my building and it's completely unobstructed. Like there's no trees or buildings that are uh, blocking my view. So the sun comes in very readily, but it's only in the morning. But right now in the winter months, I find that the sun's a little bit more intense. So my house plants actually dry out a little bit quicker, kind of coupled with the fact that the heat's on in my home and I'm not supplementing humidity with the humidifier. So even though you might hear to water your house plants less often in the winter time, you, like me, might find yourself watering them a little bit more often. So just something to keep in mind there. But I really love this Peperomia. It's one that's kind of come up in popularity a little bit over the last couple years, which I'm really excited about as it's just so incredible. Like I get so excited. I've been a big fan of this Peperomia for probably a couple years now, uh, but it just isn't the most exciting as a lot of Peperomias might suffer from in the public eye, but uh, if you do grow this houseplant, I'm sure you know exactly why I'm obsessed with it. And you're probably just like me, where you just gotta kind of feel the leaves. They feel so fun because they're super succulent, but they're super fuzzy and felted and literally just encased in this layer of like white fuzz felt that's like so thick. It's so much more like thick and felted fuzziness compared to the Sideraceus and the Cissus that I was talking about earlier. This is a completely different like fuzziness of its own. So definitely one worth owning. Uh, it's a very, it's a sensory plant. I really enjoy it. So uh, definitely one too that you need to not overwater. You can tell with how thick and succulent these stems are that uh, if I was to overwater this thing, it would probably rot in an instant and just like fall over flat and just, you wouldn't really be able to fix it from there. Peperomias, uh, once they start rotting, you usually can't come back from that. So that's why they kind of fit me like a glove because I'm very forgetful with watering my house plants. Sometimes I just can't be bothered. We have a little muffin intermission. She's been so interested in being on camera lately. If you guys saw my plan of the week when I did my Pylea peperomioides, um, she was the star of the show. She couldn't leave me alone to the point that I had to wrap up filming because, yeah, oh, she just seems like every time I do this, she's like, I just want to be on camera more. Can you just pick me up? I want to be seen. I totally understand, sweet pea. Okay, so I have two more to talk about today. Oh no. I'm like, I might have talked about this one last year. I'm really not coming in uh, good with the report, guys. So this is uh, Philodendron squamiferum. I have been pretty head over heels for a couple years now. I feel like any time I've done like a top 10 houseplants or my favorite houseplants, I feel like the number one spot in most cases has gone to like Philodendron pedatum or Philodendron florida or Philodendron squamiferum. All these houseplants that have these lobed, leaves, or these philodendrons particularly that have these lobed leaves. I'm obsessed with this leaf shape. A couple years ago, this was like everything to me. It still is everything to me now, but like it is something I was just completely enamored by. And admittedly, I've gone to like houseplant markets and seen houseplants with these shape, and maybe I already owned the houseplant, but I couldn't give up an opportunity of owning another one because I'm just so obsessed with the leaf shape. And I'm sure you guys can see why. But the reason I wanted to talk about Philodendron squamiferum today, specifically in spotlight like this one, is because the petioles, I think, just take it to the next level. So you can see these red, super fuzzy petioles. It's, it's very, very weird. It's like a very not fuzz like any of the other houseplants that we've talked about today being fuzzy. This is like plant material that's just kind of like expelled from the petioles as if it was like growing it out like hair. It's very, very different. It's very peculiar. It's very interesting. There's a lot to love about this houseplant for those reasons alone. Uh, this isn't the most like popular or like readily avail available houseplant though. Uh, fortunately though, because I feel like if you do find this one at a houseplant store, is it going to be cheap? No, but I don't think it's going to cost as astronomical of a price tag as some of those other philodendrons that people go wild about or anything variegated, like the variegated version of the philodendron Florida, I feel like, would go for like two or 300. Well, you could probably find a philodendron squamiferum from for between like 50 and $100. I would say that's extremely feasible. But you can really see on this leaf right here, particularly this, how red and pronounced the petioles are when they come in. It's just really something to, to really enjoy. Uh, and then over time, they do kind of start to lose some of that red color, but they will keep it to a point. But I could imagine if this plant were much more mature and had a lot of leaves on it, that the oldest petioles could be completely green as it does seem to fade over time. But you're always going to get new leaves, so you're always going to be having new plants with the striking red petiole. 
This plant has been super easy to propagate. Uh, these are actually two cuttings I have taken off my other Philodendron Squamiferum, which is actually dealing with a little bit of case of the thrips right now. So I do we need to be a little mindful there. This one seems to be doing okay. I feel like this one leaf has a little bit of damage from the past, but I think I used some systemics in here, if I'm not mistaken, which is just a surefire way to get rid of pests like that if it is available in your country. I know in some countries it's not available. I do apologize. But yeah, you can see why this plant just really does it for me, especially now that it's two plants and it's really starting to fill out. You can see the way the vines are kind of meandering their way about and kind of ignoring this moss pole, unfortunately. Nothing I can do about that apparently, but I could keep talking about this plant for a long time and just say everything great about it because I've been obsessed with it for years as I keep forgetting. So I have one more house plant to talk about today, but I have to go and reach and grab it because it's too big for me to keep in this area. So give me one moment. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this plant has grown exponentially since last time I featured it. I don't even know. This is just gonna have to work. I hope you guys are okay with this. But um, this is my Schifflera Actinophylla Nova. And once again, I definitely talked about this one in last year's favorite houseplant video. But this is my favorite houseplant. Like, hands down, no questions asked. If I had to pick one houseplant to be my absolute favorite, if I could only bring one with me, it would be my Schifflera Nova. I saw this for the first time at the Longwood Gardens, which is a local botanical garden here around Philadelphia. Uh, they had a couple of them in this one conservatory room and it just blew me out of the water. There was also another Schifflera right next to it. It was the variegated Schifflera, like just Schifflera actinophylla, like variegated. I forget the exact name for it. But so I was inspired <laughs> after this trip to Longwood Gardens. I went home and I directly looked up on the internet where I could go ahead buying this version and the variegated version of the Schifflera because I'd been growing the plain Schifflera actinophylla or the Amate version, which you're probably more familiar with, uh, in my home. And I loved it, but I wanted these because they had just so much character. So I went online and I purchased them. I get asked all the time, where did I purchase my Schifflera Nova? So I'm gonna tell you guys exactly where I got it from. But the tag right here says, I got it from www.vintagegreenfarms.com. And it was pretty inexpensive. I think I only spent like $30 on a full ass plant. So I understand $30 to some of you might be a lot to order a small plant on the internet. But like this literally came like half the size. I was surprised how, I've never ordered a house plant as big as this one was in the mail. Unfortunately though, I feel like last time I looked it up on their website, this wasn't available. So I just wanna let you guys know where I got it, but I don't know if I can help you out any further than there. But uh, yeah, this house plant has just really proven to be the most amazing house plant to me. The leaves alone are what get me. They are so gorgeous with the way that they're serrated. I don't even know if you can like see from the setting that we're in. If not, I'll include some like B-roll footage of this house plant because it's just so incredible. The way the new leaves come in is just like phenomenal. The way they're like kind of this like reddish color and they're just like expanding. And then watching them grow in real time, like myself, well not like in real time where I'm not watching them physically grow, but just witnessing it over a couple days, how the leaves just expand. It's wild because they can get really, really big as you can kind of see with like the ones down here. So I've just really been appreciating this. It's grown tremendously since I got it. I feel like it was probably around here when I purchased it, but now it's grown about another 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches since I purchased it. So it's constantly spitting out leaves. Uh, the only bad thing I have to say about this houseplant is it's really hard to find a spot for. I originally had this growing right when I moved in my apartment. I had it on my desk underneath my Soltec Solutions aspect light and it really seemed to enjoy it. But as it was growing taller and taller, I felt like it was getting too close to the sunlight as I felt like the last two leaves that, or the, the grow light, I feel like the last two leaves that grew in had a little bit of damage on them. So I wanted to move it away. Uh, however, that ended up leading to a whole um, kind of witch hunt in my home for where I can find spaces for all my other house plants because I moved one, another one had to move, another one had to move, and now I have a monstera on top of the shelves behind me that I do not want there. So that's a problem for myself. This is totally a me problem. However, I just want to mention that this house plant, if you bring it into your home, do realize that you are going to need a very large space to put it because it's, this thing does not stop growing. So. I am very much looking forward to, in like five years, this growing up to my ceiling, hopefully. This is the rate that it seems to be growing. I feel like it could be well up there by then, um, but hopefully I am in a permanent home by then because I don't think it's ever gonna be able to move because this thing is just ridiculous. 
regardless of all of the things I have that sound remotely negative to say about this houseplant, though it really is my favorite houseplant. This is the one that's gonna have to come me ever, just because it has so much character to it. Like this is definitely the houseplant in my home that has the most character and is the one that if I have friends that come over that are like budding houseplant enthusiasts, they always ask me about this and they always ask me where they can buy it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video. My top 10 houseplants of 2021 or my favorite houseplants, whatever you wanna call it, they're both the same. I will leave a list of all of the houseplants that I talked about today in the description below. If you are curious, I would recap them, but I kind of have this giant baby sitting on me right here right now. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next year. Happy New Year, happy holidays. Have a great day.